marama ake o fe ki tenga i tō titiro ki tōu ake ngākau. Ngā kai titiro whakawaho, ka moe moe a. Ngā kai titiro whakaroto, ka mai e a. If I was talking about wearing a mask, to a lot of people who you talk to about me, I'm always the happy, bubbly one who's just, you know, wanting to help everyone. But then behind that mask, I was trying to help other people to try and heal my pain. So when I was younger, I was molested. It carried on to my early 20s. And then I was eventually raped. I've had quite a few suicidal thoughts in my life. I think that was the main cause of like my mental illness from when I was young. My fear for ever coming out was that I'd break my family and that I'd break my mum. But I just thought I have to stop thinking like that and I have to do something because there's so many other people. And you know, what if this happens to someone else in my family? And what about all of those who don't have a voice, who want to say something but can't speak up? Yeah, she's had quite a few obstacles. I actually thought I knew everything until last year when she, you know, opened up to me. After I told my mum, I feel like I can finally be me. My family can finally understand why I put so much into what I do. The spirit is really open and when she smiles, well, you have to because it's just all encompassing. It's just, um, I think it's just beautiful. My mum would probably be like one of the most influential people in my life. Just growing up and seeing how she's had to deal with life and just push through and when we were really struggling, like she just kept going. Her mother, um, she was Dr. Chico Lovini. She was the first female to finish dentistry school in Fiji. She became one of the first female ministers in Fiji and then eventually she was the first female speaker of house and parliament. When I was 14, I had the opportunity to go to Fiji and help. And then she was just traveling around to different villages where she'd started up this program with the women. So they had like sewing machines and she was teaching them to sew so that they could make their own clothes and stuff and then sell it and then get money out of that for their families. And I think that's what sparked my humanitarian side. My dad was a fisherman his whole life. Him and my mum met on the boats when she just went to do like a random trip. And then they fell in love. And my dad passed away a couple years ago. It was the hardest thing in my life. I was very numb. I think how I have turned, I guess, my pain into something else is just living life to the fullest and really putting my all into my siblings and making sure that they get the best life that they can and also just teaching them and reminding them about my dad so that his memory lives on with them too. We've been here since I was about two and we've always just had such a strong connection, I guess, sort of to the land. You know how old these trees are? Oh, actually, I think Mum planted these ones. Now, in the summertime, daily life is waking up, we all have breakfast, and we come out here and we always have to pick the plums, and then we just package it and sell it on the side of the road, or we go to town and sell it at farmers' markets and stuff. I used to go to the Ohobe market and just sell from the back of the truck and then Tale thought she could do a better job, so she took bags and walked through the market. And then I sold out straight away because people kept coming in because this little girl with the curly hair would say, plums for sale, plums for sale. Yeah, that pretty much sums Tale up. I'm a youth advocate, and I'm also the Whakatane Future Leaders Coach for this year's Future Leaders Programme. 
He wants to study. That's why I'm going to bring him in. He wants to do CV and he wants to study personal training. One of our main challenges would be drugs and alcohol, but drugs is really quite huge around here. Meth is growing and it's quite evident when you go in and you see all our babies. They're hungry, they've got no shoes, but then also all of the ones going through high school now, you can see there's a lot more behavioural problems. Just working with a lot of these different youth, I know that it stems back to drugs and alcohol, and just intergenerational trauma that's happened within their families. If you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you will be successful. You know, you I actually met Tala at an event that she put on, which was called Let's Talk, speaking about mental health, the environment, opportunity in the area. She was really inspiring. Like, from the get-go, I was, like, drawn to everything that she promoted. If, and I'm passionate about my community. I'm passionate about fair representation. I'm passionate about just ensuring that there's stuff for our youth to do. No point getting to 18 and not knowing what to do and people blaming you. We want to teach our young people about politics, about the beehive, about what goes on in Parliament, because it all relates back, you know, it's politics is in the marae, politics is in your house, and just sort of making it more accessible to people, but also teaching people we can have a say of what goes on in our community. We've got a say in what goes on in our town. So I was working for the Electoral Commission and I was just going around looking for different like youth groups that I could go in and talk to about enrolling to vote. And then I came across the Future Leaders Group. They were talking about like the impact we're going to make in our community, connecting with other people and just talking all the sorts of stuff where I was like, oh my gosh, I was born for this. Like, I'm ready. And then we ended up going to Festival for the Future. It was in Wellington. I remember sitting at the back of the TSB arena and the first speaker was Professor Mehana Duri talking about Maui and fishing and how Maui used to go out with his brother and they'd go at the same time, the same day, the same fishing spot and always came like the same size fish. And then it moved on to where Maui knew there was something bigger for him, he went out and went and pulled off like the biggest fish. The end of um, Professor Mehana Duri's speech was, if there's anything you remember from my speech, it is to find your fish. As you can see, I took it quite literally. And it's to help people find their passion and turn it into their profession so that people could find something they love, they could be getting paid for something they love so that they're living for their work instead of working for a living. And how we are doing that and aiming to do it better is to provide free workshops and free programs in the community run by members of the community who are passionate in that area. I want to see Find Your Fish being run here in Whakatane. It's called a movement because I see it going across New Zealand. I want to see it established in Whangarei and Wellington, being run by youth leaders in the community who are like passionate about the same sort of stuff I am, going hard, making a change in their community. That would be my ultimate dream. Ko te ngā kaurorotu te paenga kotahi, he paenga nui atu, te angitū, me te manahau tēnā i tētahi mea kē atu. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.